Advent is a season of preparation for Christ's coming. A question that I've been praying with for these past few weeks is this. How do I, I prepare myself for Christ's coming this year? How do I prepare myself to have a meaningful and joyful Christmas that I can sing a song like Joy to the World or Lips for Joy as an infant in Elizabeth's womb? So I fall back to some of our traditions, right, which is decorate the house and writing Christmas cards, hosting parties for student ministers and young adults, Christmas shopping. And I have a confession. I actually had a good time going shopping for my secret Santa at Forever 21. (laughs) Now, before your imagination runs wild, I need to tell you why. Now, the person that I am a secret Santa, you know, she wants certain gift. So I asked my colleague, Gabby, for advice. And she said, I know a perfect place for you. So I went with her. So she took me to this 40, uh, forever 21. So we get there and we got a gift from, for the person I am a secret, secret Santa at the store. So going back to the question, How do you and I prepare ourselves for Christ's coming? How do you and I can have the meaningful and joy Christmas that we all want? What do you think? We need to look at Mary. Mary as a model that anticipates and prepares herself for Christ's coming coming. Now, in order for us to fully understand and appreciate Mary, we need to enter into her shoes and going back to the time and place where she lived more than 2,000 years ago. Now, people back then anticipate a Messiah, a Savior. So how did Mary herself anticipate Christ's coming? Now, there's two significant stories from the Gospel of Luke that tell us how Mary, about Mary before the birth of Christ, the Annunciation and the Visitation. So in the next few minutes, I invite you to enter into Mary's stories and shoes and what we can learn from her. So the first story, Annunciation, and you and I, we're all familiar with this story. You know, Mary was living in an ordinary, a normal life, and one day the angel Gabriel appeared and asked Mary to be the mother of God, and she said yes, and then she visited her cousin Elizabeth, and after three months, she gave birth. Right? We all know that story. And sometimes we can totally think that, oh, this is just a familiar story, and we might miss the cost, the risk of Mary when she say yes. Or we might think it's so simple and easy for her to say yes. Why not? If God asked me or asked you to be mother of Jesus, well, maybe not me, (laughs) asked you to be mother of Christ, most likely, say, of course. But if the angel asked you and me, we would say yes right away, right? But the story is much more complicated than we think. When the angel asked Mary, to be mother of Jesus. She faced with a huge dilemma. Again, we have to live at that time, right? 2,000 years ago. So at that time, Mary was engaged to Joseph. But she has not moved in, meaning she has not lived with Joseph. As she said to the angel, how can this be since I have no relations with a man? So the angel went on to explain it to her that she will be conceived a child by the Holy Spirit. Now, imagine you are Mary. What would you say? Imagine you're Mary. You have two choices. Either you say yes or you say no, right? So if yes, there's two possible consequences. Two possible consequences. Joseph, her fiancé, 
either accepts her or rejects her, her pregnancy. Now Mary took a huge risk to say yes, knowing that there's a strong possibility that Joseph might not accept her pregnancy, that she might be stoned to death according to the law. But she dares to take a risk. She used her life. She dared to follow, the, to allow the Almighty to use her life, her body, to do as Yahweh wished. As he said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. How did Mary anticipate Christ's coming? By letting go her fears and surrender her life and her body for God to do whatever God wants. Second story, the visitation. Today's gospel, St. Luke told us that after the Annunciation, Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah. Now, I wonder why Mary visited her cousin Elizabeth in haste. What do you think? What is so big deal about this visitation? Now, there's two possible answers. One, some might explain that, well, she did not really totally believe or trust what the angel told her. So she went to check it out, to double check to see whether the angel Gabriel said it's true. If you recall, when angel Gabriel appears to Mary, the angel told Mary that Elizabeth, your cousin, has been conceived for six months, even though she was barren. Because nothing is impossible for God. So if Mary went to see what the angel said about Elizabeth is true, then what the angel said to her, which is Mary, is also true. So I just want to check it out. So what do you think about that explanation? Now most of us don't think so, and rightly so. Because today's gospel, Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, so not just from Elizabeth, but the Holy Spirit spoke to her to tell Mary, Blessed are you who believe. Blessed are you who believe that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. So why did Mary visit Elizabeth in haste? The second possible answer. Because she always think about other person rather than herself. She always think about other people first. So when she heard the good news that Elizabeth, her cousin, was barren and now being conceived for six months, Mary went to congratulate and help her cousin. So church, this is a big news and this is a big deal because imagine a teenage girl, 12, 13, 14, 15 max, just being pregnant, set out and travel to the whole country in haste to a town of Judah. And the distance from Nazareth all the way to south, roughly about 65 or 70 miles. Now, take about four to five days walking, right? 65 to 70 miles for us probably about an hour driving, right? But for the people back then, take about four to five days walking. Now, St. Luke tells us that what Mary's vacation brings Elizabeth and an infant so much joy that an infant in Elizabeth's womb left for joy. Now, why did an infant left for joy? Is it because of Mary? Yes, but there's more. Because this is what Elizabeth said, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. 
how did this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? So Elizabeth did not say to Mary because she wanted to say nice things, but the Holy Spirit graced Elizabeth to be able to see and recognize the baby, the pregnancy that Mary carried is a little Jesus in her womb. So Mary brings joy to Elizabeth, yes, because of her, but more importantly, because she carries little Jesus in her womb, she brings joy to other people. So what can we learn from Mary? How to prepare and anticipate Christ's coming. What can we learn from Mary so that you and I can have a joyful and meaningful Christmas in 2018. There's two lessons. The first lesson is to say yes to God. Now, you and I, we're all faced with many choices. Sometimes it's difficult choices. Sometimes we have to choose to let go of our fears, bad habits, agenda, and completely surrender to God. Allow God to use our lives and our body to become instrument of God's love and mercy. Let God use our eyes to see the beauty and the goodness in those who need our eyes, who need our mercy eyes. Let God use our ears to listen to the cry of the poor and the elders, the lonely. Let God use our mouth to speak the words of comfort, the word of encouragement, rather than gossiping. Second lesson, bring joy to other people, as Mary has brought joy to her cousin Elizabeth. Because Mary carries Jesus in her womb, what if you and I invite one person come to Christmas Mass? Bring joy to that person. What if you and I invite those who have no one to share Christmas, to celebrate Christmas, come to our house so that you and I can bring joy to that person? And once we say yes, allow God to come into our lives, we will carry Jesus with us and bring joy to others. May you and I can sing the song, Joy to the World, on Christmas Day. Amen.